Hey friends, in this video, I am going to tell you all about the LG 49 inch wide, ultra wide screen monitor and what I think about it after spending a week and a half with it and share with you the good, the bad, and the ugly so that you guys can make an informed decision if you decide to buy this to be more productive in your workspace. I'm finally going to reveal my LG ultra wide 49 inch monitor that I absolutely love. But I will tell you, it took a lot to get this all set up. So I'm going to share the good, the bad, the ugly so that you guys can know what to expect when getting this monitor. I am not a gamer. I get this mainly because I want to be more productive um, at work. So in my corporate day job, I want to be able to reference material on the left and right of my screen as well as have my main screen be the uh, workhorse of my day. And so what I wanted was an ultra wide monitor that had one taskbar that I can manipulate during the day. And then also for my side hustle and weekend uh, jaunts, I wanted to be able to edit video with a big timeline. So that is the main reason why I bought the LG ultra wide monitor. So I'm going to share with you guys some of the things that I had to work through in order to figure out how to use this monitor the right way and make sure that I was more efficient in the way that I was using it. Now, when I went shopping for the 49 inch monitor, there were about three brands that stood out and I went to micro center to kind of check them out in person. Uh, but ultimately they did not have this monitor um, in stock or even on display uh, to the store that I went to. But I did a little bit of research prior to the Micro Center. So when I went shopping for a 49 inch monitor, I actually had three brands in mind to go look at doing some research on my own. So the first one uh, was LG. Second one was Samsung, and Samsung had a beautiful like back of the monitor view. It had lights and stuff on it. But what I found was that the Samsungs only went up to a resolution of like 3100 or whatever that resolution is, like 3000. And I'm very, very used to having my two uh, Apple cinema displays, 27 inch at 5120, I believe, on each of those monitors. So I needed a really high resolution. The Samsung was not going to cut it for me. And the Samsung is really good for gamers because it has a high um, refresh rate, uh, which is at like 120, I believe. But then I also um, heard that with LG and Dell, they have very similar technologies because apparently LG makes whatever the monitor components for the Dell. What was great about the Dell and the LGs were that the resolution could go up to 5120. Um, and there were, the off-brand um, could also go up to 5120 as well. However, um, what I found when going um, to the store and checking out the off-brand, like the menu components were like red and was confusing and I was trying to figure out whether or not I needed to switch between one computer to the other computer, figure out how to switch like component screens and stuff and I felt like what I saw in the store with the Dell, it had a little bit prettier uh, interface when changing the monitor inputs uh, versus the off-brand. Now the off-brand was uh, considerably less uh, expensive by about three to four hundred dollars in the LGs and the uh, Dells. So that's a heads up. So ultimately, I looked at the Dell and the Dell, um, I've used Dell monitors before in my corporate work and um, I like Dell. However, the Dell's uh, monitor stand was kind of ugly. It was really, really plain. It had a flat base and I mean, that it's probably fine from a vanity perspective. I really like the gold trim on this, even though I'm getting rid of this and um, mounting it on a different stand so I can have more space. All right, so I ultimately bought from b &H Photo and I uh, was so excited when the FedEx truck arrived um, and at the same time the Amazon truck arrived as well. Uh, but I was really excited because this thing was massive and <laughs> the uh, FedEx guy told me that I was the talk of the sort when this uh, monitor came and so you can see that this thing was ginormous and it was almost as tall as me and I'm only five foot two. All right guys, I just got this in. I'm gonna go ahead and open it so you guys can see what this looks like. I'm so excited. I am so excited. This is so dope. Um, I am going to set this up um, on my uh, standing desk and see what it looks like. So stay tuned. I'm going to go unbox it and then tell you guys what I like. I'm not going to go through all of the tech features of it because you can find some different videos on it. I chose the LG because my goal was number one, productivity. Two, I did not want a bevel in the middle. And three, I needed one that could uh, switch between personal and work uh, fairly quickly. And this was the best one I could find. So I'll show you all the different features as I go ahead and set it up. Um, I'll figure it all out and then I will create another video on how I've set this up. 
Um, so um, I'm working from home remotely uh, these days and so I wanted to make sure that I got a monitor that um, basically fit my space. So I'm really excited. I'm gonna go ahead and unbox it and show you guys what it's all about. <laughs> I unboxed it, everything looked great. Um, word to the wise, the cords are really important. Like the additional accessories and cords that came with it, it's super important. There was a display port that I've, I've never used this type of port before, so it's really new to me. And so a uh, display port was really important as well as the USB uh, uh, cord that came with it because apparently that hooks it up so that the USB ports on the monitor will actually work. And I had a finagle with that for a long time until I could figure out how to get my Mac Mini um, as well as my work HP laptop um, Elite Book to hook up all uh, well with this monitor, okay? Now what was really surprising to me was how hard to actually get both computers set up so that I can actually work with them. Uh, the first is the resolution. If you look on Reddit or any of the different forums, you'll find that with the Apple operating system, it's really hard to get that 5120 resolution screen that they um, advertise, okay? It's super hard. I actually upgraded my Mac Mini to Big Sur and it finally was able to give me that resolution. Otherwise, I was stuck with that um, 3120 or 31 whatever uh, resolution that I absolutely, like, I couldn't stand. Especially with how narrow this monitor is compared to my two Apple uh, theater monitors that I had prior, okay? So I was really disappointed when, like, I had to do all this stuff in order for me to get that 5120 resolution that was marketed. I mean, that's a huge deal. Uh, I sold two of my Apple uh, cinema theater display monitors um, that were absolutely beautiful. Um, the only thing that I didn't like about it was having a dock on one screen pop to the next screen and then having, you know, the, the bevel in the middle where my, um, where my monitors, but I just wanted one few view. But in order for me to kind of change from that to this, I was hoping I would get the 5120 resolution. And ultimately I followed some instructions on how to like install some monitor codecs and all this other stuff and I just didn't want to like mess with messing up my Mac Mini and so I just decided to upgrade to Big Sur which is in beta mode right now and it allowed me to have that 5120 resolution that I needed so that was great but that took me like four days to kind of figure out how to get that resolution okay but the problem is that my HP computer which I cannot install any crazy software on because it's my corporate computer um, it only gets that 3180 I think that's the number 3180 resolution uh, which kind of sucks but at the same time it's a Windows computer so I can live with it uh, because I'm not like editing timelines or anything like that I'm doing just more reading and emails and uh, just sending out, you know, messages and all that. So I'm okay with having a lower resolution here, but if it would have um, been stuck at that resolution of 3120 for my Apple computer, which I do all my video editing and my photography and all that stuff and my personal stuff, um, I would have returned this. So just so you guys know, if you have um, a Mac and you are not getting that full resolution that I was promised, maybe upgrade to Big Sur um, using the beta program. Uh, that might fix it because it definitely fixed it for me. All right, so I'm going to attempt to explain to you guys how I have my computers all set up, okay? Again, I have a Mac Mini that is used for personal work, and then I have a corporate laptop, which is a Windows PC uh, HP Elite Book that I use for corporate work that I have to use uh, VPN with, okay? And so what I want to explain is basically that this monitor only has one upstream uh, cable, which is a USB-C, all right? One of the biggest problems with this monitor is it only having one single upstream port. The reason why that's important is if you're trying to use two computers, which I am doing, some of you guys aren't using two computers, but for those that have two computers, one for work and one for personal, um, then it's going to be problematic in that if you want to use the USB ports that are tied to this monitor, because there's like two on this side and I think there's two or three on the back side, uh, then if you want those ports to work and kind of uh, switch back and forth between those computers, then that's going to be a problem for you. Uh, the reason why is that that USB USB-C port that is on this monitor is the only one that is upstream compatible. 
what that means is that if I have my headset that I use for both like recording uh, YouTube videos like this for personal use and then my work laptop which I use to go and uh, join conference calls, the problem is that I have to use this USB-C port here and I switch it to my Mac Mini, which is not a problem, right? So the USB-C port's here, I can go here for my Mac Mini. Uh, it's just annoying, right? That's one of the downsides of this monitor. There's only one uh, upstream port. Now, you could say that you could use a dual control, but I can't actually download that software on my corporate laptop because they just uh, tie that down so much. And so uh, natively, like, it, it just doesn't work. So what I will say is that um, this is not bad, like going from here to here. One of the benefits of a USB-C that's touted and marketed is that you could use this to uh, display to a monitor as well as power your laptop so that I can get rid of this power adapter. So if you're wanting that minimal, clean look, like that is going to be a problem with this monitor, especially if you're using two computers. Um, so I'm going to tell you guys exactly how I set this up, knowing that this port right here, this USB-C port, is tied to the USB-C port back there and I switch it back and forth um, in my corporate job, okay? So I have anything that I want hooked up uh, to be shared among the computers hooked up to the monitor, okay? So I'm not having to fidget back and forth between putting USB-B here and a USB there, all right? So what I have is my printers all set up um, based off of the monitor um, and then I have anything that's like uh, my cutting machines and all that hooked up just straight to my Mac Mini. Anything that I shared, which is basically the printer, is hooked up directly to the monitor and um, my headphones, okay? So those are the only two things I truly have hooked up to the monitor uh, so that they're shared between both computers. All right, so first off, um, I have my computer here. I have my power adapter because this is actually going to be used as uh, basically a, uh, a hub, if you will. And then I have my uh, HDMI to HDMI. All right, so that's how that's set up. And then my Mac Mini, what I have is USB-C on this side, and then I actually have um, a display port in the back that I'm using for that. And then I have this right here. This allows me to utilize the monitor as a USB hub because it has a ton of USB ports um, and allow me to connect to those devices on either computer that I hook this up to. That's how I have it set up. And again, um, for this computer, I only have a 3000 resolution. And then for my Mac Mini, I had to upgrade to Big Sur operating system in order to use the full resolution of 5120 that they um, tout. All right. So, so that is how I have my entire setup done. Um, you'll see that this webcam did not come with it. Um, I forgot to mention that webcam is actually hooked up to the monitor. And again, it is powered by this USB-C. So if I wanted to use a webcam here, I hooked up, hook it up here. But then if I want to use a webcam on my personal device, I hook it up here. Um, I'm never in a position where I'm actually utilizing both computers on the same screen, which you can do this, especially if you download their dual controller, uh, which I'm not going to. It allows you to do picture in picture so that you could have like my PC on this side and then my Mac mini on the other side. I'm never going to do that. Number one, um, I like to keep separate uh, work and play and two um, I'm just it I think the resolution would look kind of weird so anyway that is uh, basically how I have my computer set up for both work and play the other thing I will say is that I have my keyboards um, I absolutely love the MX keyboards as well as my MX Master 3 what's really great about this like I said I have two computers set up um, this one this MX Master 3 you can see that there's buttons um, there's a one, two, and three. I can set this mouse up for one being personal and two being work. And then this keyboard, MX Keys, I'll link it down below. It has one and two as well. So that when I'm wanting to switch, all I have to do is click on this button in the back, switch to the HDMI output that's on my computer, and then switch to two on here and I'm um, ready to work, or one if I'm ready to play. Okay, so that's really how I have it set up. There's a ton of wires, as you can see here. I'm getting a stand, um, a separate stand that will allow me to kind of push this back a little bit because it's kind of like up in your face. Um, note that the stand is massive, okay? This stand takes a big part of my um, my room here. And one thing that you'll also want to know is that this stand is absolutely massive. And um, it kind of protrudes out this way. And it has a clean look. But I will tell you that um, 
it doesn't give you a lot of space, especially if you have a narrow desk. I have a standing desk uh, that I bought from Ikea and it's pretty deep in terms of a desk. It's deeper than any desk I've ever had or used. So it's not a big problem for me, but I know that a lot of people that I've watched like reviews and videos on, um, it is a big problem uh, for the stand, especially if you have a narrow desk. So word to the wise. And I wouldn't recommend this standing desk from Ikea because if I shake it just a little bit, you see how that monitor shakes? It's kind of scary. So um, that's probably a future uh, upgrade if I ever get a chance to do that. But overall, I mean, it is a solid monitor, especially after figuring out the Big Sur issue. The resolution was going to be a big uh, deal breaker and a return option if I hadn't been able to kind of download Big Sur and um, upgrade that only because my Apple cinema displays were beautiful and had that high resolution that I needed, especially when I'm editing videos and photos and stuff. But for work, I mean, it's fine having that 3000 resolution. I can deal with that. All right, so what I'm gonna do is kind of use the on-screen um, software so that you can see how I divide my monitor up. I could use better snap tool to kind of uh, set these settings, but I feel like the on-screen display um, settings are really, really easy to use, better than like going in and manipulating better snap tools. So just a heads up if you have a Mac. So what I'm gonna do is go ahead and go to uh, the on-screen display. It's called on-screen control start. And then there's a screen split and I can split it into three or four. See how like the pink line shows up? So I can go ahead and set that up and then you'll see how it snaps. See, just like that. So that's really um, how I use it. And if I wanted to snap it into three, let's see, um, three. So now it snaps to three, okay? So that's really how I use this monitor. It's amazing. I love having this main screen here without a bevel in the middle, like separating my vision, uh, my view. And then I have uh, two reference items on uh, each side. So that's really how I have it set up. So I hope you guys found this review on the LG 49 inch monitor really helpful. I absolutely love it. I feel like I'm more productive. Um, also, I feel like having two reference areas where I can have a main screen without a bevel dividing uh, my view has been wonderful in terms of productivity and also just getting stuff done. Um, it definitely isn't for gamers for sure, but I do believe uh, with all my heart that from a productivity, if you're just using it for like email or also uh, graphic editing or video editing, I think it'll be just fine uh, for those purposes. Um, I also hear that this monitor is, does really, really well with um, color and you're able to kind of set the color tones that you need to. Um, I'm not big on uh, needing things to be certain colors or very specific colors, so I was okay with that no matter what monitor I got. Um, as long as I was able to kind of see the things I was working on, that was what was more important to me. And also being able to be productive and getting stuff seen in one view. So overall, um, I would definitely recommend it. Um, I'll also create another video on basically how I chose the LG monitor. And I'm just gonna tell you upfront that it was because of the stand. And you know what? I'm not gonna be using the stand uh, for very much longer. I'm waiting for um, a mount to come so I can mount it on here and get more room and real estate on my desk. And so I would recommend also looking at the Dell uh, because I think it's a little bit less expensive or you can find it a little bit less expensive than the LG. And if resolution isn't an issue for you and you want a game, I hear that the Samsung is really awesome for that as well as that off brand called Aeon. I don't even know how to pronounce it. It's Aeon or Aeon. Uh, so go ahead and check those out. But overall, I would highly, highly recommend this. I wouldn't spend more than $1,500 on it, honestly, especially with having only one upstream port. Uh, Port. Uh, that is really, really annoying to me. That is the biggest downside, I feel like. The other downside is for PC users, I haven't found a great uh, tool or free tool where I can divide my screen up uh, evenly in three windows. Um, I hear that there's a power toy that I can download and so I'm going to try that. But I can't download a lot of crazy software on my corporate device because it's obviously a work uh, device so I've been having to manually resize all my windows to basically divide it into three different areas so that's been a little bit annoying but I've been able to kind of use uh, some of the desktop settings in order to have uh, one desktop set up so that I'm looking at email Email and calendar and another one where I'm actively looking at documentation so uh, that's what I'm using it for work and also being able to edit graphics and video I hope to continue uh, creating videos like this where I'm sharing software and hardware that 
helps me be productive uh, while work working remotely at home, uh, whether it be in my corporate environment or also being an influencer online. Um, hopefully you guys enjoy these videos. And if you do like this video, go ahead and click on the like button, subscribe to get notifications the next time I create new videos. I'm going to continue creating videos on technology because I love technology and I want to make sure that I share with you guys my best finds and best flops so that you guys aren't making mistakes when you're buying um, expensive technology in order to be more productive at home. So hopefully you guys found this helpful. And if you guys have any questions at all, leave a comment below and I will talk to you guys soon. Bye guys.